You are driving on the freeway near a large truck, you should drive. A. Directly in front of the truck. B. Directly to the sides of the truck. C. Closer behind the truck than you would a passenger car. D. Farther behind the truck than you would a passenger car. You are driving on the freeway near a large truck, you should drive. D. Farther behind the truck than you would a passenger car. Large vehicles like trucks, tractor trailers, and buses have much larger blind spots than passenger vehicles. These blind spots, also referred to as no zones, exist to either side, in front, and behind the large vehicles. For this reason, you should increase your following distance when driving behind a large truck. Headlights must be activated when visibility is limited to a. 1,000 feet. b. 1,500 feet. c. 2,000 feet. d. 2,500 feet. Headlights must be activated when visibility is limited to a. 1,000 feet. In most states, you are required to use your headlights between sunset and sunrise, or 30 minutes after sunset to 30 minutes before sunrise, as well as times when visibility is reduced. The threshold for reduced visibility is 1,000 feet or less. Some states place the limit at 500 feet or less. In these circumstances, your headlights should be turned on. What are the colors of warning signs indicating upcoming hazards? A. White. B. Yellow. C. Orange. D. Red. What are the colors of warning signs indicating upcoming hazards? B. Yellow. Warning signs are a type of road sign that warn drivers about upcoming hazards and changes in the road. Warning signs are yellow with black symbols or lettering and shaped like a four-sided diamond. When should you not pass another vehicle? A. When you have a broken yellow line in your lane. B. When the car is stopped at an intersection or crosswalk. C. In the left lane. D. On the right when the vehicle you are passing is turning left. When should you not pass another vehicle? B. When the car is stopped at an intersection or crosswalk. One of the places you should never pass a vehicle is when it is slowing down or stopping at an intersection or crosswalk. In these instances there could be a pedestrian crossing the street that you cannot see. If you pass the vehicle, you run the risk of hitting the pedestrian. What does a yellow arrow mean? A. Speed up. B. Prepare to stop and yield to oncoming traffic. C. The light is changing to a green arrow. D. You must reverse. What does a yellow arrow mean? B. Prepare to stop and yield to oncoming traffic. A solid yellow arrow on a traffic light means that the protected turn is ending soon. If you are not already in the intersection, you should come to a complete stop, yield to oncoming traffic, and obey the next traffic signal. Unless otherwise posted, what is the speed limit in a business area? A. 5 miles per hour. B. 15 miles per hour. C. 25 miles per hour. D. 35 miles per hour. Unless otherwise posted, what is the speed limit in a business area? C. 25 miles per hour. Business districts, like residential areas and school zones, have unique characteristics that can make them more hazardous than driving on the open road. When driving in a business district, obey the speed limit, keep a safe following distance, and scan the road ahead, behind, and to the sides of you for hazards. Which lines indicate passing is allowed if there are no oncoming cars? A. Broken yellow. B. Solid yellow. C. Double yellow. D. Solid white. A. Broken yellow lines indicate passing is allowed if there are no oncoming cars. Different colors and configurations of lane markings communicate which types of moves are allowed from the lane you are traveling in. You may only enter into the opposite lane of traffic to pass vehicles moving in the same direction as you when there is a broken yellow line on your side of the road. If the broken yellow line is on your side, 
You are allowed to enter into the opposite lane to make a pass as long as there are no oncoming vehicles. When you encounter an aggressive driver tailgating you, you should a. Immediately change lanes. b. Slam on your brakes. c. Slow down and allow them to pass. d. Speed up to increase the distance between you. When you encounter an aggressive driver tailgating you, you should c. Slow down and allow them to pass. Whenever you encounter an aggressive driver on the road, the most important thing for you to do is to stay calm to avoid escalating the situation. If a driver is continuing to follow you too closely, the safest thing for you to do is to slow down and to allow them to pass you. Avoid making eye contact with or making gestures to the other driver. Additionally, you should avoid speeding up. If you do that, you'll only have a tailgater at a more dangerous speed. You should only pass on a two-way road when a. It is legal to do so. b. It is safe and legal to do so and you can see if traffic is approaching from the opposite direction. c. When you have a solid yellow line on your side of the road. d. A vehicle is turning. You should only pass on a two-way road when b. It is safe and legal to do so and you can see if traffic is approaching from the opposite direction. Using the opposite lane of traffic to pass other vehicles on a two-way road can be a dangerous maneuver in the wrong situations. First, you must only pass when it is safe and legal to do so. You will know if passing is permitted if the center yellow line is broken on your side of the lane and there are no signs that prohibit passing or indicate a no-passing zone. A broken white line between lanes on the roadway means a. The lanes are moving in the same direction. b. The lanes are moving in opposite directions. C. The lines cannot be crossed. D. You are in a carpool lane. A broken white line between lanes on the roadway means A. The lanes are moving in the same direction. White lines are used for traffic moving in the same direction. If there are broken white lines between lanes of traffic, that means that drivers can cross the lines to change lanes or pass. If you do cross a broken white line, you still need to exercise caution and check your mirrors and blind spots to ensure there are no other cars, motorcycles, or bicycles occupying the lane. In a standard passenger car, partial hydroplaning can begin at speeds as low as a. 10 miles per hour, b. 25 miles per hour, c. 35 miles per hour, d. 55 miles per hour. In a standard passenger car, partial hydroplaning can begin at speeds as low as c. 35 miles per hour. Hydroplaning is caused when there is a thin layer of water on the road, which can occur when it is raining, when the roads are wet, or when snow or ice is melting. If you drive too fast over these wet surfaces, your vehicle's tires can actually lift off of the surface of the road and begin to ride on top of the thin film of water. When this happens, you will experience a total loss of traction and you will have little to no control over your vehicle. The proper way in which to make a right turn is a. Get into the right lane and complete the turn immediately. b. Swing to the left before making the turn. c. Get into the right lane, but do not slow down. d. Use your turn signal, get into the right lane, slow down, and yield to pedestrians. The proper way in which to make a right turn is, d. Use your turn signal, get into the right lane, slow down, and yield to pedestrians. Whenever you make a turn, it is important to slow down first. Taking a turn at too high of a speed can cause you to lose control of your vehicle. Additionally, passenger cars should avoid swinging to the left into the adjacent lane. Other than large vehicles, swinging wide is unnecessary and unsafe when you are making a right turn. A triangular orange sign on the rear of a vehicle indicates that a. It is a vehicle that is carrying hazardous material. b. It is a slow-moving vehicle. c. It is an HOV vehicle. d. It is driven by a student driver.
A triangular orange sign on the rear of a vehicle indicates that b. It is a slow-moving vehicle. An orange triangular sign is fixed to the rear of a vehicle to indicate a slow-moving vehicle. Slow-moving vehicles displaying these types of signs cannot travel faster than 25 miles per hour. At intersections, crosswalks, and railroad crossings, you should always a. Look to both sides of your vehicle before proceeding. b. Look to the left side of your vehicle before proceeding. c. Look to the right side of your vehicle before proceeding. d. Only look at the traffic lights and road signs. At intersections, crosswalks, and railroad crossings, you should always a. Look to both sides of your vehicle before proceeding. In any situation where traffic, pedestrians, trains, or other vehicles cross paths moving in different directions, it is extremely important to check for traffic all around you. When you come to an intersection, a crosswalk, or a railroad crossing you must check for vehicles, pedestrians, bicyclists, and trains approaching from the sides of you before you enter the intersection. Even if you have the right-of-way as granted by right-of-way rules, traffic signs, or traffic lights, it is still important for you to confirm that the way is safe and clear. True or false. It is permissible to pass on the right if the vehicle in front of you is making a left-hand turn. A. True. B. False. A. True. It is permissible to pass on the right if the vehicle in front of you is making a left-hand turn. Passing on the right is acceptable in a variety of circumstances. One of the most common ones being if the car you are passing is waiting to turn left. On expressways it is recommended to pass on the A. Left. B. Right. C. Shoulder. D. Any lane. On expressways it is recommended to pass on the A. Left. If you are traveling on a multi-lane expressway, it is recommended to pass on the left. While passing on the right is permitted on roads with multiple lanes of traffic moving in the same direction, passing on the left is typically safer and helps with the flow of traffic. For one, slower traffic, traffic entering and exiting the freeway, and large trucks often use the right side of the road. There are typically more cars changing lanes on the right. If you pass on the left, you'll often have a clearer path for passing, and the cars you are passing will typically be able to see you more easily. Is driving a privilege or a right? A. A privilege. B. A right. Is driving a privilege or a right? A. A privilege. A license to operate a motor vehicle is a privilege granted to eligible drivers, not a legal right. If you fail to meet the necessary requirements to prove that you can safely operate a vehicle on public roads or if you commit certain offenses, your privilege to have a valid driver's license can be taken away. Depending on the circumstances, your privilege to drive can be suspended temporarily or revoked indefinitely. You are not allowed to park within. How many feet of an intersection? A. 20 feet. B. 30 feet. C. 40 feet. D. 50 feet. You are not allowed to park within A. 20 feet of an intersection. You are not allowed to park and leave your vehicle within 20 feet of the nearest intersection. You are only allowed to park and leave your car where it is legal and safe to do so. You must look for no parking signs, painted curbs, and refer to your state's parking laws to make sure that you are parking in a place where it is permitted. Can you turn left on red? A. No, you can never turn left at a red light. B. Yes, you can always turn left at a red light. C. Yes, if you are turning from a two-way street onto a one-way street. D. Yes, if you are turning from a one-way street onto another one-way street. Can you turn left on red? D. Yes, if you are turning from a one-way street onto another one-way street. You can only turn left at a red light if you are turning from a one-way street onto another one-way street, unless it is prohibited by any traffic signs. If you are going to turn left on red, one-way street to one-way street only, you'll need to yield to any pedestrians, bicycles, and other vehicles first. 
You must drive at a speed. A. That is no more than 5 miles per hour faster than the posted speed limit. B. That is exactly at the posted speed limit. C. That is appropriate for the current conditions. D. That is 5 miles per hour slower than the posted speed limit. You must drive at a speed. C. That is appropriate for the current conditions. You are always required to drive at a speed that is safe and appropriate for the current conditions. This is based on the maximum speed limit, the weather conditions, the traffic levels, the condition of the road surface, the type of road, the time of day, construction. In some states, this is known as the basic speed law. Which of the following are used as left edge lines on divided highways? A. Broken white line. B. Broken yellow line. C. Solid white line. D. Solid yellow line. Which of the following are used as left edge lines on divided highways? D. Solid yellow line. The color and type of lane markings indicates what part of the road it is dividing and what kind of passing or turning is permitted. On a divided highway, the leftmost edge of the road is marked by a solid yellow line. Next to this line will typically be a concrete divider that separates traffic moving in opposite directions. You are not allowed to cross over this line to ride on the left shoulder to pass other vehicles. In a school zone, when must a driver stop? A. When children are crossing the street. B. When a school bus is stopped with its red lights flashing. C. When instructed to do so by a crossing guard. D. In all of these situations. In a school zone, when must a driver stop? D. In all of these situations. School zones are places where drivers need to use extra caution, scan the road around them, and obey all traffic signs and warnings. School zones can be a dangerous area due to the fact that small children may be entering the road. Additionally, traffic in school zones can get backed up as parents pick up and drop off their kids. It is highly important to slow down and stop when necessary in order to keep the children and school faculty safe. Where is it illegal to pass? A. Over a solid double yellow line. B. Near a hill or curve. C. In an intersection. D. All of these. Where is it illegal to pass? D. All of these. Passing other vehicles can be a dangerous maneuver. That's why it is important to only pass where it is permitted and when it is safe to do so. In places where passing is allowed, it is important to only do so if there is a large enough gap in traffic and if there is enough space to return to your lane after the pass. True or false? Always adjust mirrors after adjusting your seat. A. True. B. False. A. True. Always adjust mirrors after adjusting your seat. The first thing you'll want to do before you start to drive is to make sure that everything is in the right place. This includes your seat, your mirrors, and your steering wheel. After you've got your seat where it needs to be, then you can adjust your mirrors. You'll want to move your mirrors after you adjust your seat to ensure that your lines of sight are tuned to your seating position. How long should you signal before you turn? A. 500 feet. B. 100 feet. C. 50 feet. D. 25 feet. How long should you signal before you turn? B. 100 feet. Your turn signals, or hand signals, are one of the most common ways you'll communicate with other drivers, bicycles, and pedestrians on the road. It is important that you signal early enough so that other drivers know what you are going to do and can react accordingly. At lower speeds, under 45 miles per hour, you should use your turn signals at least 100 feet before you need to make your turn or change lanes. At higher speeds, above 45 miles per hour, you should use your turn signals for at least 200 feet before you turn or change lanes. These distances give other drivers enough time to recognize your intentions so they can either slow down, stop, or change lanes as necessary. Great job! Here are some of your next steps to getting your learner's permit or driver's license. Read and study the official driver handbook from your state DMV. 
Take more free practice tests at puedomanejar.com. Gather all your necessary forms and documents before you visit the DMV office. Before you know it, you'll be driving in your very own car all by yourself. puedomanejar.com. Free DMV practice tests and much more to help you pass your real exams. Visit us today.